board should have received their meeting minutes from last month's meeting. Any additions or corrections? I don't. Then I will make a motion to accept the meeting minutes as written. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed?
for the 2021 year, and it is a five-year term. Under administration, uh, the only thing that we have upcoming will be employee reviews as we work through doing the reviews and getting with the individual employees. No question. Uh, financial, um, the only update that we have is that the public budget hearing will be October 20th at Baldwinsville Station 1 at 7 p.m. Tony, truck maintenance? Yeah, um, very small. Um, putting um, tires on Lysander Squad, uh, Lysander Rescue 7, and Ballinsville Squad 2. We have a resolution written up to be able to do that. We can talk about that, you know, after that point. Also on here was Ladder 3 and uh, Squad 3, the exhaust, that's already been done. Tony, I don't know if you want to give them a little bit more detail on the, the tires for the three vehicles and the cost. Yeah, of course. Um, on the tires, I, I went through state bid, got tires through state bid. Um, total cost for all three vehicles is 4267.02. Basically, 10 rear tires at 28, uh, 285.72 apiece. That's six. Steer tires at $234.97 a piece. The total amount includes uh, the tire mounting and uh, disposal fee. Again, 4267.02 at state bid.
station one EC has been completed. Um, he ran it, tested it, all works good. He had to add some more airflow to it. It was very low. He doesn't know how the other one ever worked properly. Um, full barn electric update. Um, about 75% done, conduits in the ground, wires in the ground, um, lights, most of the lights are hung. So it be, should be wrapped up in the next couple weeks. Um, the crates in the parking lot, we did get them by in the end. I had somebody come in and co-patch around them and uh, seal them up. They actually come out pretty nice. I'm going to be happy with those. Other than that. Jeff, do you have pricing on what it's going to cost for the generators? Um, Eagle Station 1 uh, for battery, uh, $443.85. Uh, Eagle Station 2, similar battery, $441.79. And then Lysander, uh, the radiator, replace lower hoses, blah, blah, blah. Like we talked about, just make sure you put out a like, responding message to the station one when they do that parking lot. Give them some notice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll just let them know when they start working on it. Okay. Anything else? Yeah. Rain source. Uh -huh. <coughs> yep. Uh, I just have uh, one new RTP that I should have brought up at the workshop and didn't think about it was um, the new nameplates for um, Station 1 and Station 3 um, so that we all have nameplates when we move into Station 3. And then Station 1, I, um, I'm going to bring up at the workshop as far as getting nameplate holders for these racks over here that currently don't have them. And um, working with um, name is engraving they're going to give us a break if you know due to the fact that we got over 57 name plates um, normally they're 18 dollars a piece and they're going to give them to us for 13 dollars a piece so um, with that it's a we'd save 285 dollars so if we were to order all of them it would be 741 dollars
TP1766 is for the asset types for the computers and computer equipment and RTP1769 AM graphics for the patches um, for Rescue 6. Um, the barcode tags are $379.66 and the Rescue patches are $190. Um, there was a RTP for a meeting conference system, um, but we're going to table it this time until next year's budget. Just the asset tags, are, are we going to have to re-inventory everything, or is they going to go along with whatever we already have in the system? So right now we don't have much in the system. Uh, we have uh, we have a bunch of the original towers that were purchased in 2014 and some in 2015, but there's there's a bunch of stuff missing. Um, a couple of the new laptops, uh, or sorry, a couple of the new computers got put in there, but uh, computer monitors, projector, uh, router, a lot of the real expensive stuff's not in there. Probably wasn't thought to be put in there. Essentially, yes, we'll have to put it all in there. Chris, if you give me the information, I can enter it anyway. Yeah, I have a spreadsheet with all the serial numbers and, and stuff, so um, it, if we move forward with it, um, we'll have all the numbers. We'll go down and assign each number you know, per that list, and I can give you that list. I'm, I'm more than happy to help you under it. I'll make a motion to go ahead with RTP 1766 and 1769 for a total of 56966. I'll make that a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. All right. Okay. <clears throat> Lastly, are either training or parts requests? Um, Chief, just so you know, uh, and Tony, um, for the graphics for Rescue 6, um, and on graphics uh, is going to come here for that and apply on site. So oh. I'll, I'll let you guys both know um, they're only going to need about two hours to, to apply them. So. Thanks. First request is for live fire training and play for two attendees at three hundred dollars a piece. The total is hundred dollars. Big wire class in Otter Lake for one of our members, October seventeenth and eighteenth, for hotel stay and travel costs. Roughly, fifty one is probably the hotel. Um, MDT removal to remove the MDT and data service from Lysander Car Four and place in Lysander Car Three. Um, Prices for work to be done at United Radio for $384. Um, big easy kits to allow faster access for vehicle lockouts, four of them at $70 for $283. Request for LED portable lights, two at $1,176 each for $2,352. Should be holding the harvesters for more information. Okay. Same with the. No, the uh, the lay system we still have the information. We'll do a price change on that link. Yes. Um, the auto belay system, 100 feet for. I'll just put it down here. 1,631. And then Jerome's for nozzles at $3,904. So I don't know if you guys want to take these one by one. Any questions on any of them? So what's what's the scoop with MDT, Chief? Why are we moving MDT? So it's not the MDT, it's the Sierra Wireless system that we purchased. It's currently installed in one of the vehicles that is not going to be utilized. 
um, next year on the old Explorers, and it needs to be installed into one of the newer Explorers that we've kept for several years. Okay. But it's just for the serial wireless, not MMPT, so it's we call it. I got you. So it's not really new. So before we start moving stuff, did we determine which one we're keeping and which one we're going to have to evaluate it again? I can't hear you anymore. Can we have the two cars evaluated to see which one we're keeping and which yes, one we're keeping? Yes, we can. We have not. We can do that. I actually think it, when we put them side by side, it's going to stand right out. We should be able, I don't have your answer, but it'll be, I'll email everybody the answer. We should well, do I'm that. Hold on, let's wait. Let's try this again. So out of those two older explorers, okay. neither one's going to have any keys. Can we hold off a hair? What's your so thought? Your I, well, 
probably take one and have to complete the inventory and then pick the seven that we already have on file. Um, as for the nozzles, we haven't purchased nozzles specifically in a great number of years. I agree with you. We're currently on the left we are running nozzles from 1982. Okay. That, that's good information. But not, but not functioning as properly and not to the standards that are today. No, I get it. Because it has to do with water flow and GPMs and... Water flow and PSI. In order to get the water flow out of the current nozzles that we have on the rescue, um, you need to pump approximately 175 to 180 PSI. And you get the same water flow out of the nozzles that are plus 575 PSI, which is far less than three minutes by the way. Correct me if I'm wrong. A, a nozzle from, from a TFT nozzle from the 1980s is not repairable even at the factory. I know that. So there again, that's why I'm asking. Out there, but you're trying to find new old stock in order to find I, I get you. That's why I'm asking if that is what you need for our operation to keep us safe. I'm all in. If you can wait 60 <coughs> to 90 days, that you, you got like to tell us that. What about these lights, on the rescue, Chief? It, the current lighting that's on the rescue is even older than the nozzles and then this very large bulb circle D ones that as soon as they get warm and then water touches them when you do an overhaul, they burst and shatter, causing a hazard. I got the price of those down to twenty three hundred. And I wish that uh, versus twenty three fifty two set, set firefighter on it as far as money, but because similar you. nozzles or similar lights if you go to home depot are two hundred bucks but they're not intrinsically safe for firefighting operations, etc. Well, I don't. I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem with the nozzles. Twenty one hundred. Twenty three hundred. Twenty three hundred. For the two. For the um, okay. LED right, portable right. lights. Right. Right. Vote on these per item. I support some of it, and I think some will be. Well, fine. I think the chief said to hold off on the lockout kits until we can identify what we have inventory. Right. right? Mm -hmm. Yep. I don't. I don't have a problem with the nozzles. I understand the age. I understand that's bread and butter of what we do. I guess my question would be, can we hold off on the lighting and the harness and the belay until we get to the, the new budget here? I understand what you're saying about the lighting, but how often do we light up? How often do we take portable lights off the truck? Is it, is it something we do every week over the course of the next two months? We don't something use them as do much as the nozzle. Fire. Hmm? Something we do every time we fire. I get that. A working fire. I get that. How many working fires do we have a week? Can we hold off a couple of months until we again until we I'd love to say yes, it's not gonna be any working fires over the next couple of months, but I can't believe that. I don't know. I get that, but it's not like we don't have any lights on the truck. You're right. I'm not saying we don't that we don't have zero lights on the truck. I'm just saying that we can make do that that's what you want to hear, that we're gonna shut down the crew, we're not gonna shut down operations without those lights and no. all. on the train? Uh, I got to use the because I was told not to use them. Okay, well, I'll make a motion to move forward with the live fire training in clay for $600 and uh, the training class in Otter Lake for $151 for a total of $751. Okay. I'll, I'll okay. stock in both of those. There's money in the training budget for both of them. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Rick, do you want an RTP number? I guess if we want to throw one to it. Uh, 1925. Covers both of them, Wayne? Um, I can put them on separate if you want them. I'm, or on one, whichever one you want. Do you want them separate or together? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. All right, one's fine. Save the paper. I'm going to make a motion 
to um, do the MBT removal at the 384. Let's do that one separately. The auto delay, 100 foot, was $992.80 for shipping. One more time, Wayne. $992.80. Nozzles total. Are they a variety of sizes or are they all the same? Yeah. Um, There's straight four um, the adjustable ones that we had specifically demoed over here. Um, you get feedback and then um, two and a half as well, correct? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to take a, I'm going to make a motion. To, to go ahead with RTP 1265 for the nozzles. That's uh, RTP 1265 for the nozzles at 3904. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Do you want to table the other ones? Do you want to? I, I'm, yeah, I, I, I think, I, I'm asking you guys to wait for that, see where we're at, if we can do it. Does that affect the live fire program, John? No, it does not. Then I'll ask to wait for that, but make sure it doesn't get lost in what? Um, that delay device is a safety device that they use for balance. Or will use for balance. Instead of having an annual tender line, like we used to have. The auto delay system automatically controls the line while the firefighter's on. As I'm familiar, design. but we've been doing bailouts here. What have we been using? We're doing our first floor. What's that? We're on the first floor and we're having to do the first floor and we're second. And that reminds the newer folks into doing balance. The next step is the next floor. Or if we have other options with other facilities. You have to, you obviously have to do bail training the rest of the year, you do, right? Is that it? 
They're right. doing pain as they're currently doing, utilizing the first floor instead of the first floor simulator that was built, it used to be housed in the station. It would be the only one we could have utilized without that fully system. Bill, your input's huge here. Say again, sir? Your input's huge. So input? tell, tell me why we need this. The audible A system is an automatic safety device. Instead of having somebody have to tender the line constantly to pull up if something gets, somebody gets, gets into trouble on the way down, this device will automatically stop. It's repeatable. It's not like fall protection. It's a whole different uh, type of device. 100 foot long, it'll carry at least or 500 pounds, I believe, is the model that I totally inspect out. More than what our firefighters wear when it's to be out. And it will allow us to at least get in once a year, I would imagine, at least once a year, doing auto belays from another pipe on a higher floor with the additional safety feature of the belay. Otherwise, we'll continue to do a one floor, unless there's some change to that. Would you say, Chris? I'm just trying to see how much is in the budget. No. Budget's twelve thousand five hundred. Current out of the out of the account is two thousand six hundred. But I feel like there is a big. Can't. I didn't. I didn't go through and subtract what's outstanding still. It it still goes back. We we have all this money in the line item, right? But it still comes from it. it I, so I so get that. where I'm. Again, we're, we, we're moving into a new station. We've done the best that we can to plan and organize and structure and want everything to be smooth. And we've hit every snag and every, from sewer to, to, to things that we pay people huge money to help us with. I'm afraid that when we go to move into this new building, Murphy's Law has not been good to us. <laughs> at all and um no matter how much we plan so that's where my reservation from everything from light bulbs to safety lines is my reservation right now but i do do believe that i do not want to stop the training i don't want to get in the middle of the training if, if safety officer hopper thinks that this is going to make a difference and the money's there but Remember, when we get down to the end, just remember. I guess one last, one last comment, John, Chief. Can this wait or not? I need a black and white answer. That's what we built the training center for. Becky, I'm going to make a motion on RTP, um, I'm sorry, 
There's not an RTV in there. Um, 1920. Make, say that again? 1920. Make a motion with 1920 for the auto belay line at 1631. That's 1,631. 992.87. Okay, let's try this again. One more number, Wayne, one more time, please. 992.80. Yeah, I'm sorry, that's all I hear is not coming in here. I'll try this again. I'll make a motion to buy the belay line at 992.80. Please. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Alright, so are we agreeing to table the lights until later? Yes. Please make sure that's brought back up. Just put it under old business. Just put it on. Um, moving on to security and computers. Chris or Rick. All right, just so um, kind of an update, a few things that are going to be coming up. Um, the Doyle for the door system, um, we're currently running on a system that's no longer supported. So when we do uh, open station three, we do have to upgrade to the new system through Carry, which is the manufacturer of the, the door controllers. Um, new system, the software is free, however, there are conversion costs if we have Carry convert everything over. Um, and we will need to um, upgrade to a new computer in the IT room at some point here. Um, Advanced IT is getting me some uh, options. They do some refreshed uh, lease um, computers. So they'll, they'll take in lease, like two year lease computers, refresh, um, they actually warranty them. So they're going to give us some options. Um, just something to uh, um, keep in mind going forward here. Um, do we have any numbers on either of those, Chris? Not yet. I, uh, Doyle, um, the manager, and the carrier up were both off on vacation um, due to the long weekend, so I haven't been able to connect with them yet. Um, just got an email earlier today that uh, they'd like to connect with them next week, so I'm going to tag you in that one um, since you're a little more familiar with it. Uh, from the uh, safety office, um, the trial with the iPad that um, Becky let them have has been pretty successful so far. Unfortunately, uh, Apple released their new software update this past month, which has made that iPad no longer useful as the software is no longer supported. Um, so that iPad will no longer support any apps that um, they want to use. So. Um, both Safety Officer Hopper and Safety Officer Dunlap have asked me to look into some options for um, iPads. Um, I have not asked them yet, um, so sorry Safety Officer Hopper about uh, putting you on the spot right now, but I, I haven't asked about waiting until next year on this at all. Um, so we can talk about it after if you don't want to answer yet. In light of what page or not, it's, it's a high lot, it's an improvement. Give us better control, eventually accountability control, inventory control, um, seeing the size up from our position. There's a lot of opportunities. There. Do we need it today? No. No, we don't. In fact, that was about ready to trade you for some, some novels, so to speak. So, do you have money to buy some sort of equipment? It's something that we've talked about, and Dunlap's just right up his alley. So, I said, go with it. And we'll see what you can find out. So, we got some good information. But we can wait till January, February. I can still write. He can still write. We got the big board we'll pull out of our trunk. So, that can wait. So, we can table this, throw it on old business, and bring it back up. Um, if, if you did notice here, I, Megan, I did give you one too, so that way you didn't have to try to listen to the recording and 
trade or anything up. Um, there is a uh, state government Apple store, so I did send a request in to them to see what they need because it wasn't as simple as putting in an EIN number or anything. But there was a state rate. It's not a huge discount, but it could be something. So. Um, next on here, I'd like to uh, kind of talk about uh, allowing the chief's office a little more access Chiefs and safety officers, sorry, a little more access to I am responding. Um, there's a few things on here. Um, the access to edit the message scroll, which the message scroll is what comes across the bottom of the screen when you're logged in um, to the web browser. Um, you can put anything on the bottom there. Since I joined, nothing has been ever updated on the bottom there. It's always said you can sign in for shifts, and that's it. Um, so I, I can imagine that if we allowed access, Safety Officer Hopper would probably put stuff about staying hydrated and changing out CBA batteries, you know, disinfecting, stuff like that. thought it could be useful. Um, schedule messages. Right now they have access to send messages, but they couldn't, can't schedule one. So scheduling messages would be if they... 10 o'clock at night, they remember they have to send something tomorrow. They want to schedule it so it's sent tomorrow, so I don't have to remember to do it. They can do that. Just a feature that probably got added through Ryan responding later after they were given that permission. Um, creating calendar events. Right now, uh, um, the chiefs or the executive board presidents usually ask um, Commissioner Ravis or myself to add an event. Um, and uh, view, viewing emergency contacts. Um, right now we don't have a great way to uh, access emergency contacts, especially from the uh, emergency scene. Um, this I'm responding has the emergency contacts list. It's the easiest one for members to go in and update their own emergency contacts. Um, so the chiefs having the ability to access that from the scene um, right through their phone or their MDTs would definitely be helpful. And uh, there's an expiration tracker. It looked like we used it, Hopper. It looks like you guys used it probably about four or five years ago. For, yeah, it doesn't look like it's used anymore, but if, if that's something you guys would like to use again, I, I just threw it on here. Just in case it's something. I wanted to bring it to the board. It, giving them access is something I, I know we all want to be in agreement on. Or extending permissions. We as the board have never really had anything to do with I am responding, so. No, but we own it. We, we usually make the decision on who gets access. Yeah, I don't need it. I know like we talked, uh, Rick, it's, it's a little more to update at the end of the year, and it's willing to help with that since you, I'm on it with you. So. You just gotta keep track of what specific areas are getting open so you shut them off for the people that go out. And yep. So. Uh, next thing on here, uh, Red and MX, um, just get on the, um, you know, uh, radar here. Gonna have to start looking at upgrading kiosks in the near future. Um, some of them are definitely seeing better days. Um, there's a few different options for Red NMX um, for Alpine. There's fully integrated kiosks that are full built-in units through them, more expensive, fully supported through them. You can do a tablet interface or a laptop interface like we have. Um, they can do the biometric finger, like we currently have, or you can do a key fob, um, which I'd like to see us go with the, a key fob route uh, moving forward. Less contact on a single service, surface, so people aren't all touching the same. It's less 
less uh, surfaces people are touching. Um, and with that, it doesn't have to be changing all the kiosks at the same time. It could be as simple as uh, buying um, RFID readers, uh, which are 50, 60 bucks per kiosk, which call it four kiosks since Lysander 2 is not um, used for responses at the moment. Not looking for approval on anything right now, just notice that looking into it. Also some stuff on Red NMX that's not used that we should be looking into moving forward, especially when I am responding's contract is up. Red NMX has an app. We can't use it currently based on the way the network is set up here. Um, it, the app, you can do a member call on exactly like you can with, uh, with I am responding. Their app, you can choose that you're responding to the station due to a call. And there's a bulletin board feature that shows on the screen who's responding, when they're responding. Um, exactly the same way, you can send messages just like you can. Um, everything like that. And it's already a, a module that's um, included with our subscription. Just a thought to keep on the table if we decide when I'm responding comes up if we don't want to re, or, you know, go back with I'm responding again. And then uh, it's been talked about a few times about iFire and taking that over or taking the, you know, paying for that because we use their ERT module uh, for maintenance requests and work orders. Um, Red NMX does have a work order module. Um, anything that is logged into their system based on inventory, so anything we have in there inventory-wise, from a truck to a chainsaw to a computer to a turnout gear, you can issue a work order for. It can be assigned to a person, notifications can send out, reminders, alerts, you can pull a history on it. It's already a module we have, and it can work across both fire companies, all our stations, and assigned to anyone that we give access to. Could allow us easy to pull out of the system that's uh, owned by the fire company right now. Any nope. Safety report, Mr. Yes, uh, no reports of injuries or illnesses since we've met last. We're on a good record going forward. Let's keep going. Uh, that I can substantiate a lot of that by the, the safety observations I'm going out and doing during drills and training. I'd watch and help people work, you know, coaching when necessary to prevent, you know, continued performance of a behavior that could eventually get them hurt. Everybody's been very responsive to that. Um, so I really appreciate that. These things of being proactive are going to keep us as part of our business, keeping us uh, safe and, and event free. Um, Along with that, we started uh, station inspections. Uh, I believe station two, Baldwinsville, was uh, it's on the docket, it was done. And I've got some pictures on what I want to do is, with the chief's permission and commissioner's permission, is directly feed that information to the officer of the station and have them take it and run with it. And then if there's any ERTs that need to be generated, then have that done by them as well. And we can certainly facilitate that. We can write, I, can write, I know I can write ERTs for these. So, if nobody has any issues with that, that's how we'll carry through with that. Um, the physicals are going to remain as is, as far as the level of effort we do. COVID's still out there. Jan's going to make sure that we're safe and she and her company is safe by making sure that everybody has the documentation done, coming in the door, going through the process, being protected while you're going through the process of your physical and then get you out the door. One big thing that's helped a lot, and a lot of you have commented on it, is the fact that the paperwork that you fill out a day or two or three ahead of time and bring with you shortens your stay here up to a half an hour. And everybody does it. And it gets into the system, it's already filled out. That's the form that you have to check if you've had diabetes, headaches, and that kind of stuff. You get that completed where, you, where it is for your, your section, the patient section, and bring it with you. Um, She's off also left blanks in the mailboxes. 
for people that need to pick them up and they're available online. So whenever you can use those forms, please do. It's going to save you a lot of trouble. Um, I guess that's really it. It's good. We're, we're really doing well. Considering all things, we're doing a great job. I won't say good, I'll say great. Because I know the target departments in our world out there, they're struggles. They're struggling with the things that we take for granted and do every day. It's to do it safely. Thank you. All right, be safe. Thank you. Public, uh, public use of buildings. Can you hear guys throw it on here? 
here since we haven't talked about it in quite a while. Thought it's worth a discussion on uh, what everybody thinks on uh, what we should be doing or what guidelines everybody would like to see put in place. Um, if anybody would be open to allowing small gatherings again, um, small outside gatherings. Outside isn't public coming in. Personally, I think we just have to do it on an individual basis, is my feeling. I mean, the situation with the stretching class, this 10 to 12 people, yeah. in that meeting room, certainly comfortably, you can social distance. I think, uh, personally, I just think we have to deal with them as, uh, on an individual basis and weigh how many people it's going to be, what's going on, and, and deal with it as one ops. Tony, anything? I, I'm not comfortable just, I, man, I, I don't know. How's that for an answer? I, I'm not comfortable because our, is the village's office open? Is the village community room open? Is the town's buildings open? Are they allowing functions? Um, I, I mean, we, we, I do agree to a point with, with you, Rick, on, on case by case deal, we, we just re received a, a, a letter from the fire company looking to host an event. And that's going to be well over the CDC guidelines. If it, is that it's still a case of 50 people still a case? Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't have a, I don't know. I'm, What's that? CDC in the area. Yeah, until somebody gets sick. Then I'm just telling you that they differ. You mentioned CDC, well, we're sure that CDC are different from Something that might help is if we look and see what similar departments are doing. Fire departments, not towns or villages, you know, operations. If XYZ Fire Company, very similar to us, is open and they're meeting the guidelines, might be worth entertaining, but that's, that's not a hard and true 100%. I, I can tell you this, I, family, a family member of mine, a friend of mine needs to have a gathering. And I'm thinking, who can we call in the community? Because I know the fire department's not doing it. I know Belgium's not doing it. I know, so I thought, VFW American Legion. American Legion, it was for 30 people, and they're not doing it. I'm just thinking, and their terminology was, why would we hang ourselves out there? I, I don't know. I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. And that's my opinion. I'm not there yet. I'm not comfortable. My number one priority is to keep this membership, the taxpayers, free of litigation and, and liability to keep the people safe. And I think if we open it up for birthday parties, stretching, because you know how they're going, the stretching of 12 people, it's definitely big enough. But the next person that wants to have a birthday party for 15 people, then it becomes 25 people. I mean, that's where I'm uncomfortable with it, but I will, by all means, go with the majority of the board. I'm, I'm thinking the case by case scenario. I'm not thinking birthday parties or anything like that. I'm thinking that the, the, the class that they're talking in Lysander, if some group wants to have a small meeting, um, something like that, not not a birthday party, not a, a party of any kind. If, if someone approaches us, sends an email in to me and asks, says that we want to have a meeting of, of 10 people, um, we'll follow your guidelines, whatever, that's it. We're done. We can review it case by case. That's that's it. That that's what I'm that's what I'm thinking. I'm not open to just going back to 
free for all, but I want my review in case by case. Like I'm not like I'm not comfortable. I don't want to open up to having auctions again. I, I just don't feel like that's the smart thing to do, especially with you know schools open back up and all you hear is oh this is people not had to go remote. This one going to do this because all of a sudden oh this one got tested. This one got tested. So I just don't feel like we should just open it up. But mm -hmm. case by case, I can I can see. All right, so we're going to go with case by case. So what do we, what do we specifically want to say to these individuals? Take restriction class. Yeah. Again, my family is 10, 10 to 12 people that can comfortably spread out, and I don't have a problem with it. I think we're going to have to set a limit. Just tell them like max, I mean max members 12, and. Sanitizing the station after? I'm sorry. Are what? you sanitizing the station after? Oh, we got it. After. Well, they will sanitize afterwards. Yeah. They promise. So we're going to ask them to do it. Yeah. They need to clean. Yeah. So. Temperature yeah. checks the whole jazz. Yeah. So just like anybody else. They've got to sign the book, do the temperature check. It's yeah. got to be That's spelled true. out to them. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just don't agree, but I'm with you guys. to dispose of water rescue one it is no longer operational um, without putting an extensive amount of money into it um, which the board and chiefs have all agreed is not in the best course of action for the district so resolution to, dis to dispose of surplus whereas pursuant to section 176 23 of town law the northwest fire district located in the towns of lysander and Buren, on Rock county state of new york does hereby declare that it's 1998 Larson boat VIN number last 2000043 when associated equipment is no longer necessary for the purpose and use of the Northwest Fire District and does hereby declare the following items of equipment, apparatus, or personal equipment no longer necessary for the use and purpose of the Northwest Fire District and the estimated value is less than $20,000. And then it just repeats the boat Larson VIN number. Um, Yes. Right. Yes. Becky? Yes. Right. Yes. Um, and the other, I'll say a quick one. Um, first, I went back to the tire issue. Um, it's a resolution to remove the money from repair and reserve to do the tires for the three vehicles. So it's, uh, sorry, it's a permissive referendum. Um, it is hereby resolved by the fire, Board of Fire Commissioners to remove a sum of money not to exceed 4,500 from the repair and reserve fund of the Northwest Fire District for the purpose of paying the cost of 16 new tires for Lysander Rescue 7, Lysander Squad 1, and Baltimore Squad 2 being subject to a permissive referendum pursuant to Section 6-G7 of the General Municipal Law the state of New York, the resolution has been adopted by the Board of Fire Commissioners herein indicated on the 8th day, sorry, the 13th day of October, 2020. Kitchen. 
um, it says for deep clean, kitchen walls, scrub floor, um, and the same for the training room for a total of 538.92. Um, just quick, my recommendation is regardless of what we do, let's wait on this until after the exhaust system is put in. The doors are commonly, well, most of the time, kept open there. Um, there. I don't think there's any point in cleaning it now if we're going to still keep starting the trucks and exhaust fumes are still going to be getting pushed into the room. I, I think after the exhaust system's in, we should be doing we should look into an entire station cleaning. Um, were shut down. Um, it is a maximum of five points allowed per month and both boards have inquired as to what we as board, what we are going to do with that if anything. So I will shoot it out for thoughts or comments. I don't have a problem giving five points for the couple of months that the building was completely shut down. I don't see the harm in that. But once the building and things reopen, I think it should just be for the two, two months it was closed, April and April and May. Is my opinion. I was at the same thought. I, mean, I, a little bit. I, I agree, and you know, I, like you said, after you look at it, it's not a huge impact. Yeah, it's yeah. not a big impact. It, it's not, you know, and like you said, it's not going to make or break anybody in the list. I agree. 10 points, maximum 10 points, two months. Okay. I'm going to have to look up because I don't know if there's any specific wording that we have to do specific to the resolution. I just want to make sure that we've got the wording right. Fair enough. Um, and I'll bring it back to the workshop and we can get the workshop. So it's been brought up a bunch of times, talked different times about moving the district office down here. Um, just wanted to throw it out on the table. Moving the district office down here before we do the addition to this station, my thoughts on it is it may get kind of difficult. Um, when you do the addition onto the station, we're gonna have to move a lot of equipment, or all, the, all the gear off that wall over there. Um, you're, you're probably going to have to move some stuff up upstairs. You're, you're probably going to need some, you know, move some stuff into that uh, library or conference room, whatever you call it up there, um, and, and make it crowded. And it's not the best layout as it is. Um, I'd, I'd like to move um, Megan into the uh, um, front unused uh, office at the new station three. Um, Joanne's right up in my center, very close there. I, I don't see moving her down here is a great idea, especially right before winter. Um, long way for her to drive to get down here. Um, and Megan's right around the corner from Station 3. It, in my opinion, it makes sense. The, the office is unused, and I'm not saying keep her there forever. Um, just until all the construction's done here after we build this, and be a little more convenient for both of them and uh, no. thoughts? I, I'm, I'm, I have a strong opinion about it all. I believe that um, 
our district office, as it is, we're, we're, we're meeting in a truck floor now. I can't see that changing in the next two years. Um, I, I believe in moving the district offices to the center of the fire district. I, you know, I agree with this driving stuff, but our fire district is 52 square miles, okay? Um, but what I don't want to do is duplicate uh, things that cost money. You know, if, if you know, we're, we've just convinced the chief to hold tight for a little while, um, or basically told him to hold tight for a little while. I just want to be careful with this money. I do agree. We've got to do some things different. I think we've got to get creative. This is bigger than just moving personnel. Um, with that being said, I, if, it, if it, there's a financial thing tied to it, which there has to be somewhere, I think we have to wait. With that being said, you know, I, I'll, I'll go along with it, but we just got to make sure that what we're doing makes sense financially. It makes sense for overall for our business, you know what I mean? Um, this is bigger than just the treasurer and secretary working in two different locations to me. We, we need, once we get the station opened up and we get our apparatus figured out, this has to be a priority to do our business. Our business is very, very important. That's my opinion on that. I'm not necessarily opposed to moving, moving in there. However, I will say that the room did have a purpose because it was originally going to be the member sleeping quarters. We were asked to move the member sleeping quarters to a back room, which was going to house items for our building maintenance person. We agreed to move the room, kind of swap them, and now we're saying, well, it's an empty room, we're not gonna use it. Well, no, it did have a purpose. And while I don't mind if you, the board wants to move vegan in there, but then we're gonna have to look at, what are we gonna do with Jack? Um, you know, we told him, you know, the same thing with stores, it was intentionally to move there because it's center of the district, it's not, driving out to grab a light bulb and coming back to change a light bulb. So I think that we need to make sure that we repurpose some space if we're gonna do this to house some of the, the necessary everyday items that Jack is gonna to need to do his job. Well, quite frankly, Becky, it cost us money. It, by having any one of our employees run all over, you know, it costs us money. So it has to, that has to be consideration. I mean, we pay paying somebody per hour to buy, you know, light bulb from one end of the district to the other is ludicrous. I mean, dummy this down. It's it's got to do something. Sorry, Jeff. <laughs> Nothing personal. <laughs> I would agree. I would agree to hold tight. And let's let's get in the station and get our bearings set with people that need to be in the station and get the station open and, you know, plus with money the way it is, we're trying to pinch pennies and be careful with our money and I don't, I don't see how you're going to move her without costing anything. And to your point, we didn't, we didn't outfit that room for putting someone in there operationally. So I don't, I don't even know if it has what it needs it doesn't for her to do her job. I mean, it wouldn't be hard, but you would have to run data, pull a data cable through. I mean, it does, there is a data cable that runs down the wall, so I mean, it probably wouldn't be too, but there's maybe some possible. Not, not for nothing, maybe and, to, to just let the dust settle a minute, you know, let's get in there, go through it with our team, team, make sure that it, you know, let, you know, let the dust settle. And for I, will, I will say for, for Megan, um, you know, with winter coming up, you have your laptop. There is absolutely no problem with you working from, continuing to work from home. If you know you have a space and it's working for you, I don't have any issue with that happening. Um, you know, there's no if that's the reason case. for you to drive. You know, if, if you don't have to be out there, then you can do everything from then do it from home. 
If that's the case, we have to upgrade her laptop. That laptop. It was a, it was an old laptop that was hanging around that we happened to have no. that we were able to give to her. That's fine. Where the workshop, I'll come back with. Any other new business? The nice thing with that question is her desktop could be repurposed for the IT. Her desktop's brand new. It could do the door. It could replace the, the server for the door so we don't have to do that. Um, just one mention for station, I'll say station usage. Um, Lysander Station 1, Lysander, sorry, is going to be doing a drive through breakfast November 15th at their Station 1. Um, which I think is kind of a cool idea. Mm -hmm. So other than that, there's no other usage. Um, comments from the public? I just want to uh, mention that I'm somewhat disappointed that we're going to hold off on purchasing the, uh, the sound system for now. I understand listening to the board's comments tonight that you have other priorities, other things to spend in the budget, but what I do not want to have happen, uh, Representative Patty, is we just forget about it when we use uh, the system that we have. As we heard tonight, we have interruptions from trucks coming in and uh, other noises that at some point uh, over drowned out the sound and I just hope I'm just pleased I'm just pleading to the board that yes if we wait for if we table this for the next uh, budget year just don't forget it and please we eventually we may not have it now we may not have it uh, in the next month or two but please eventually we need, uh, I'm going to need this because uh, even though the setup that I have right now, it, it suffice. I think overall in the long run, it will only benefit the board, it will only benefit those who are watching, uh, who are watching this. So please, I, uh, I beg and plead, so you're going to table it, I respect that. When it comes time for the next budget, I just... Please do not forget about this. Please do not. Thank you. What do the other fire districts do that you go to? I'm only doing this one. In the whole town, we just do ours? Yes. And I also do the Van Buren board, which has their own system, which I can plug into, and I can hear them fine. The village, by watching the village and the town of Weisslander, and the school board, they all have microphone systems which cameras can plug into and they can pick up their, uh, the voices of their board members as long as their microphones are turned on. That's why I'm surprised that NWFD is the only municipality within uh, the greater Baldwinsville area, Lysander and Van Buren, that does not have any sort of amplification system that the cameras can use. By your own admission, you don't know that. By your own admission, this is the only fire district meeting you attend, so you don't know that. Mm. Any other public comments? I have a question. I heard Commissioner Furrier speak about the addition to this building. Is that happening? Because I thought we spent the money on the it's not happening immediately, but we told the departments that we would continue to set aside money so that downward road can happen. So, talking in the next couple of years, do you have a timeline for it? We're going to apply easily five years out. Okay. to make a motion to 
to go into executive session at 8.25.